been it since I've uploaded a video, especially one with my face in it. I have been so busy traveling, but we're going to go over a trade today where I made over, well, it's, it's multiple trades actually, over $30,000 in one day. And I had a few big days the other week. If you're not following me on Instagram, I encourage you to do so. It's in the description box down below. Make sure you're not following any fakes or scammers. I will never direct message you or request to follow you or anything like that. So make sure you've got the right account. But I posted on my stories these big days that I had and I'll show you the trade that I'm talking about specifically or at least the last trade of the day. I'm finally back in profit so I need to make sure that I'm quick with this. All right, I went ahead and took $437 off of that trade, selling into that move down. So that put me up about 4,300 on most of my accounts. So times that by eight. And that is a fantastic way to end the week. And you can see I made over 30K because you do 4,000 times eight. I'm using a trade copier and that's how I scale up. It just helps the psychology behind trading and especially when you're looking to increase size. But I do want to highlight a few things. So I had a common theme in my direct messages and it was like, what trades did you take? What trades did you take? What were you doing? What strategies were you using, right? Everybody, when they see large amounts of money like that, they want to know the gritty details. And I get it. I was the exact same way. But I'm going to give you those details and I'm actually going to give you a psychology portion of the details that helped me a ton when I was like three years into my journey because one day I was having this like not argument but this like back and forth with a trader and it was in a group I was in back in the day and it was just overcrowded and I was basically saying like I loved playing reversals that's what I was good at and it worked for me but they were arguing that why would you do that why would you be a reversal trader when trading the trend is so much easier and it it is and it might be easier for some people but for my brain and how my mindset works and my thought process works and my strategy i look for certain reversal trades i have certain criteria that i follow and it works for me but with that being said, it's not going to work for everybody. If you don't know what to look for when it comes to reversals, if you're more of a bullish trader or a trend trader, then that's what you need to be looking for. And the cool thing is you can always make money on both sides. There is literally not a time or place unless you just are flatlined across the board that you can't make money both ways. So you just have to pick what direction makes sense to you, what you are seeing patterns wise develop, wait for your levels to get hit and then execute on them. So anyways, I was playing reversal trades on a very strong trend day and I was still making very good money because I was patient with my execution and it paid off. So let's go dive into the charts and I'll give you an idea of what I was looking for and how overall I made that much money that day. What I really, really want to dive into in this video is not necessarily this is what I did at every single step I will show you guys especially like right here is where I caught the end of day melt and just dive into the psychology first and then we'll go into the trades that I took and why I was taking them so the psychology of you have to understand there's two sides to every trade right there's a bull and there's a bear there's a person who is a trend trader and then there's the person who's looking to play the reversal of the trend me i've always gravitated towards being a reversal trader and that is a super controversial thing and like i said for some people it works and for some people it doesn't at the end of the day if you don't understand your strategy you're not going to be able to execute on it which is why if you're blindly following other people eventually you're going to fail and that's why i'm not a fan of just doing blank call outs or anything like that i'm a big component of the education factor and helping people understand all aspects of trading and all sides of every trade so if you do miss one side of the wave you could just wait for the other side there's always going to be a trade as long as you're patient and protect your money so on that day i took actually five different trades and that is a little bit excessive for me but like i said i was feeling really really good about what i was seeing and i was just quick in and out so the first two trades i actually did i took one bullish and one bearish so what i was looking for is i have a key level which you can see 40717 we rejected off of that perfectly combined with my blue box so this is where i was looking for a reversal trade so i went short in here caught this little dip down and then i exited and waited to see what was going to happen so at this point, I was looking to see if we were making higher lows or lower highs on a larger five minute time frame. Now you can see we caught higher support here. So that was an indicator to me, okay, 
bulls are stepping up, we could have a bullish day. So at that point I flipped. So yes, I went short here, but then I went long here back to my key level. So we're going to stop right here because these are two trades and it's all using key levels, right? Now to get these key levels, you can go as advanced as you want or as simple as you want. For me, I have a very, very advanced technique that I use on Fibonacci levels with previous data from the years that I come up with these levels and I'll use them in combination with other things, other simpler ones like basic support and resistance, the opening candle, you know, low of day, high of day, and those types of ranges. So we're going to stick with the simple version because you guys know that I'm trying to cater to beginners as much as possible. So when you're going the simple route, what you could look for is, okay, we've got the first 30 minutes of the day out of the way. That's usually the most volatile. Now what you could do is understand where low of day is. So we've got low of day right in here. And then you could also mark out the opening candle right here. So we've got this range. Now what you want to see is are we making lower highs or higher lows in this range? This right here was a higher low, which is a bullish signal. And so as long as low of day holds at this point, you should have been looking for bullish trades. So I did take a bullish and a bearish trade in this range, but that was again because I had key levels I was looking for. I had a plan and I executed on it. So I was pretty patient. I just skipped this whole move. Yes, I could have went long, but with me having a key level right here, I just wasn't super confident. So I was going to wait until I saw exhaustion at a different range. Range. You can see we came up to fill my next box to the upside and this is where I started to go short again because basically what I was looking for is buyer exhaustion and if you want to take it another step further you can put another level right here which was the pre-market high or resistance before the meltdown and so now you can see we are holding above that which is still a bullish sign but me what I was looking for was retraces to this range so not exactly but close enough you can see we came down here and we dipped and we came down here and we dipped and I was playing these pullbacks I was scalping very quickly on the one minute time frame sometimes I was switching back and forth between the one and the five but that was my other three trades that netted me and you guys saw the very last one over 4,000 but again at the end of the day I knew what I was looking for I knew what levels I wanted to hit and then I waited for that to play out and the trade to come to me now a lot of people will see this or maybe not a lot but if you're a trend trader you would have been like well why? that makes no sense why would you not have just caught this hindsight is always 2020 guys i it's actually a pet peeve of mine when people say well why wouldn't you just why didn't you just go long why didn't you just go short wasn't it obvious what the trend was doing and in the moment the trend is actually not that obvious at all especially when you are leaning to one side of the trade. So if you are going in that day looking for resistance levels to get hit, to go short, and let's just say we rip all day long and run through all of your resistance levels and you don't take a trade, that's okay. That is part of being a trader in my opinion is at least you followed your rules. That's what matters. But when people say, well, why were you looking for a short all day? Why didn't you just go long? Me personally, I don't like going long when we're way above a potential support level or we're way far away from a potential buy zone or demand zone. That just makes your risk very, very high. Now you can trade those, but you've just got to make sure that you're bringing your stop loss behind your, whatever you're using for trend. EMAs, you know, if you're watching RSI, MACD, whatever you're using, you just have to make sure when we're getting in that either overbought or oversold territory and you are trading the trend, you just have to be extra cautious with your trades at that point. So long story short is, yes, I could have played the trend, but we were oversold here after this move down in pre-market. So then I looked to buy here. Once we hit my target, I was out. Yes, I missed on part of the move, but that's okay. I also went short here when I saw we rejected wick against my key level plus the blue box, which was a A plus setup for me, also the timing of day. So these trades that I was waiting for were my trades. They were my plan. And I think that's where a lot of traders go wrong is they just want to say, what did you do? How did, like, what did you do? Let me do that next time. So if you adopt that mentality that you're just trying to do what everyone else is doing and you're not creating an own, your own plan that makes sense to you, 
you could have went in this day and you could have started shorting right here and then shorted again and then shorted again and next thing you know it's went against you all day long because you didn't have a plan now when i have key levels like this in my head i'm like okay if we form higher support over this key level then we're too strong and i'm just going to wait until we hit my next area or range of interest before i short again and you can see we didn't even get this was actually one of my last trades of the day was in here but we didn't even start to exhaust until closer to 2 30 which timing is also really important guys that's a little bit more of an advanced topic but the whole point of this video is yes i did have a really big day i was super happy with that day but i also want to highlight my strategy does not produce an a plus setup every single day since I am mainly a reversal trader and I look for reversals off of my key levels, that doesn't mean I don't take trend trades. I definitely take trend trades. But me personally, I like reversals more because I could have a super tight stop loss. My risk is very, very small. The problem is when people jump into the strategies that are involved with reversal trading and they don't have their stop loss and risk management in place, they oftentimes end up betting against the trend with no plan other than, oh, they were doing it, so I did it. And now I'm down money and now I, you know, hate trading. That's kind of how it usually ends up going. So I highly encourage you guys to whatever strategy you choose, it makes sense to you, you're confident on it, and that may only be trend trading, right? That may only be bullish trades. You know, a lot of people can't seem to get their head around the bearish side of trading. And so if bullish things are what you see clearest, go for that. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to get a trade every single day and that's okay. You're actually not supposed to. If you're only looking for A plus trades, you won't get an A plus trade every single day. And knowing when to sit on your hands and knowing when to wait and knowing when to call it a day early will get you way further in trading than trying to make sure you're taking, you know, five to six trades every single day. That definitely will hurt you in the long run. And real quick, I always like to summarize what we just talked about because I know I could start rambling on about different topics. And just to bring it all home for you guys, one thing that you can look for if you are just, maybe you're just starting out or you're looking to simplify things is like I said, make sure that you are aware of after the first 30 minutes to the first hour sometimes of the day, you're aware of high of day and low of day. So high of day it would be right here if you're using about the first hour. So let's see, 1030 was right in here. So high of day would have been right in this key level and then we've got low of day here. Once you mark out that range, are we making higher lows or lower highs? And then start marking out some levels. So you can use your pre-market support and resistance for ranges. You can use, you know, low of day, high of day for your ranges. And you can just start adding some lines on your chart. That way you can get an idea and you can say, okay, are we making higher lows or lower highs? Is trend going up or is trend going down? And then once you can identify trend, which a lot of people are not patient enough to even wait for trend to develop, then you can decide, okay, am I going to be a trend trader or am I going to be a reversal trader? And whatever you pick, if you are a reversal trader, you're looking for exhaustion on that trend, right? And you're waiting for your indicators or your levels to get hit. And then you've got that tight stop just in case you are wrong. And there's always another chance, right? There's always another play to be had. So if you're wrong, cut it, try again later. If you are a trend trader, make sure that you also know where the key pivot points are because you need to understand when that trend might get it exhausted enough to where you need to start looking to take profits or moving your stop loss up a little bit tighter so you don't lose profits if you are playing something like this. And that's also where it can be really helpful if you're in a group because just for example, I remember this day, there was another guy who's been with me for a while. He was playing trend the whole day and I was going short the entire day. Well, minus like this one little long that I took in here. But most of the time, most of the trades that I made that day were going short and that's why it doesn't matter. As long as you have your plan and you're following your plan, that is all that matters. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, let me remind you, I only have the Instagram accounts linked in the description box down below. I will never direct message you and all the what's app commenters down below are scammers if you're interested in education and taking 
your learning about trading further. I have an eight-week program and an awesome community full of traders. You can check out more information down below. And then also some extra freebies will be linked as well in the master link in the description box. I appreciate you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.